If you want to make money with a mobile app, but you're not taking advantage of all the tools available today, you are wasting your time, money, and energy. And you're getting crushed by the other people using these tools because they give you such a big advantage. So in this video, I'm going to show you the exact tech stack that I use to print money with mobile apps. So recently, my mobile app PuffCount just hit $40,000 in MRR. I'm going to break down exactly why I use these tools, the different stages of mobile app development that I use them in, and all the tips and tricks I've learned along the way. And I'm also going to show you how much they cost. And the best part is anyone can use these tools to build a mobile app that generates cash flow passively. But first, you need to understand that there are different stages to building and scaling mobile apps. And the tools you need will depend on the stage that you're in. There's the research phase, the building phase, the optimization phase, and the marketing or scaling phase. So I'm gonna break down exactly what each of these phases is and the tools you'll need in that phase. So I encourage you to stick around until the end of the video so that you understand the entire process and see how it ties together. And also, if you're watching on your phone, ditch it, get on your computer or get on your TV and lock in because I'm gonna be dropping some insane value in this video completely for free. I have absolutely nothing to sell you. I'm just gonna show you exactly what tools I use, why I use them and how you can use them to build and scale your own mobile app. So let's dive into it. Here we have the entire blueprint that you will need. If you want to follow along on this blueprint, I will leave a download link in the description. I will provide links for every single one of these tools so you can get this document and follow along with me. So as you can see, we have our different phases broken down here from research to building to optimization to marketing and scaling. So. In the research phase, this is when you're coming up with the idea of your app. It's very important that when you're coming up with your idea or you're in the first phases of building your app, you do market research. And there are two tools that I recommend you use for market research. Number one is Sensor Tower, and number two is Google Trends. These are both free tools. You're off to a great start. On Sensor Tower, you can spy on other apps. You can type in any app in the world. You can see how much money they are generating every single month with their mobile app. This is a great way to get an insight into the market and see what apps are working. If you want to build a health and wellness app or a macro tracking app, you can look at other competitors in that space and see and prove that they are making money. Competition is good in the mobile app space. You want to know that other competitors or other mobile apps out there are generating money so that you have a chance to do so as well. Google Trends is great for this also. You can see the search volume data from Google. So if people are searching about quitting vaping, which is how I came up with the idea of my app, you can see that those trends and those keywords spike at certain periods of time. So here we have Sensor Tower. Like I said, you can literally spy on other apps and see exactly how much revenue they're making. So. For example, Google with YouTube has made $136 million revenue this month. That's absurd. But you can scroll through and you can see what apps are making what money. For example, Ketchup right here is a gaming company and they've made 60 grand in revenue this month. So use this tool to spy on other apps in your niche and understand how much money they're making or even discover new niches. You can see that this app is absolutely crushing. So maybe I should build an app in the fitness or the wellness space, right? Because those apps do very well as you'll see on Sensor Tower. And here is Google Trends. So this is a similar tool that you should be doing market research for. Here is my apps kind of search term. It's quit vaping. Puff Count is a quit vaping app. And as you can see, the Google trend data, AKA the people searching for this term on Google is straight up into the right. It is at its all time high right now. So that tells you that people are searching for this term and they're searching for a product that will help them do that, right? People are searching for a product to help them quit vaping. So I know that I'm operating in the correct niche. This next phase is the fun part, or at least my favorite part. It is the building phase of the mobile app. And stick around to the end of the video because after the building phase, we're gonna show you how to scale and market and really make a lot of money with mobile apps. But for now, we're sticking with the building phase. This is the phase where you are getting your design built, you're building a team, you're finding a developer, and you're putting everything on paper, you're making everything come to life in your mobile app. This is where your idea turns from just an idea to reality, a real product that people can use. So in the building phase, the number one most important tool, and it is completely free, or maybe it's like 99 cents, is a pen and paper. What you wanna do before you start building your app is you wanna get all of your ideas down on paper. You wanna sketch out what the app should look like in your mind. You wanna get all of your ideas, brain dump everything, your competitors, your ideas, your features, the screens on the app. You wanna write all that down on a piece of paper and you wanna even sketch out your app ideas, right? This will serve as your hub for all of your ideas. So that you can go back, if you have a, a thought or an idea in the middle of the night, you can go back and add to this document. It can be a pen and paper or just a simple Google Doc. 
And then next we have 99designs. If you've been watching the channel, you know that I love 99designs. 99designs is a tool that will allow you to launch a contest to get designs built, UI designs specifically. So what you can do is you take that sketch that you wrote down on that piece of paper and you can upload it to 99designs, start a contest, and then you can get 60, 70, 80 different designs from designers all over the world. And the greatest part is you only pay for the one that you like the most. So every time I build a mobile app, every time I get a UI design done, it is on 99designs. Next we have Upwork. Again, completely free tool to start using and browsing for freelancers that can build your mobile app. But I use Upwork every single time I'm hiring someone for my team. It doesn't matter who they are, developer, a copywriter, whatever it is, I go to Upwork and I hire that person. So you can find super talented developers for a relatively low cost on Upwork. And again, Upwork is completely free. You just have to pay for the job posting. You have to pay the freelancer that you work with. The next tool we're going to talk about is Mobbin. And this will help you also in your design phase and your sketching phase when you're sketching out your mobile app. Mobbin is a tool that will literally show you other apps designs and it will show you their complete onboarding i'm just going to show you right here let's take a look at the computer you can scroll through Mobbin and you can check out different apps onboarding. For example, here we have Duolingo. You can see their entire onboarding flow. You can see what different screens they have. You can see how they're convincing users to, when they hit the paywall, actually pay for the app. So you can literally search any app here. Here's another app called Dot and you can scroll through and check out their entire design. Unfortunately, you can't view any app on Mobbin. They do make you pay, but it is a measly $15 per month and you have to pay quarterly. So they're going to make you pay four payments of that. So $60 a month. But I promise you looking at these other apps and seeing what they're doing to be successful and seeing how they're setting up their, their UI design and their onboarding flows, it will give you an edge when you are creating your app and you won't have to go through the phase of testing because these companies have spent millions of dollars on their designs, on their testing. So you can be confident that if you do something similar, your app will work. Another tool that we have is paywall screens, very similar to Mobbin, but this one specializes in paywall screens. What a paywall is, is when a user goes through your app and they hit a paywall, they're asked to pay, right? So you've probably seen some of these. This tool, paywallscreens.com is completely free. So you can check it out right now and you can scroll through different paywalls, but actually you can see how much these paywalls are making. So this is very similar to Sensor Tower. You can see how much these apps are making with these paywalls. For example, Duolingo, here's their full paywall. <laughs> you can see that they're making $14 million a month and you can see kind of every different apps paywall. Again, you know, you can search apps. Let's search for a weight loss product. Here we have a yoga product you can see all their paywalls. And what you can also see is that certain paywalls use sort of the same tactics. For example, the top three earning paywalls here, this one's at 800K a month, 200K a month, 100K a month. They all pretty much have the same paywall. They're offering a monthly, a yearly, and a three month plan, right? So learn what you should do on your paywall and copy what the most profitable apps are doing with their paywalls. This is a cheat code. Next, a very fun part of the whole process, which is the optimization process. These are the tools that I use when I am optimizing my app. My app has been built and now I wanna understand what users are doing in my apps. I wanna be able to see all the analytics so that I can optimize every single part of it from the onboarding to the paywall, to the user experience, to features. Using these tools, I can understand what every user is doing at each part of the journey in my mobile app. So let's dive into it. So coming in at number one, a tool that is very near and dear to my heart is Superwall. This tool absolutely changed my business. Before I started using Superwall, I think PuffCount was doing around 3K MRR. After I started using Superwall, I like 10X my revenue. This tool is something that you absolutely need if you are building a mobile app. And what Superwall does is it allows you to A-B test different paywalls. So as you can see, these are all the paywalls that I A-B tested and you can test different pricing, test different wording. You can test different designs on your paywalls. This tool will, will allow you to change all of this remotely, which means you don't have to send updates to your app. You can change your paywall remotely and this allows you to adapt much quicker and maximize your user's LTV. And next we have RevenueCat. RevenueCat is an amazing tool because it will give you analytics on your subscribers, your trials, and your LTV data. So here you can see our MRR been steady around 40K per month for the last 90 days now and you can see all sorts of cool little features here they'll give you your trial to subscription ratio your initial conversion ratio this is an amazing tool to use to understand the overall change in ltv and new subscribers and your trial conversion rate you absolutely need revenue cat if your app offers in-app purchases in any way next we have apps flyer apps flyer is a mobile measurement partner and what that means is you essentially need apps flyer to run 
paid ads on TikTok or Facebook or any ad network, right? Because Apple doesn't allow you to track that stuff super easily anymore, but AppsFlyer solves that for you. So without AppsFlyer, you are not able to run ads effectively on any paid ads platform. So you absolutely need AppsFlyer. You can set up certain events in your app and you can optimize for those on these different ad networks. So if you want to optimize for subscriptions or free trials or signups, you can do all that through AppsFlyer. You map it back to your paid ads platform and it will do it all for you. And next, there are two tools, Mixpanel and Amplitude. These give you in-depth analytics on people that are active in your app. You can set up different events and you can track different little cohorts in your app. So for example, here is a Mixpanel board that I have and we are tracking the effectiveness of a push notification. We are kind of tracking how many people click on this, what the click-through rate is, and then how many people view the paywall and actually purchase from these different push notifications. This is honestly like late stage app. It's when you're getting into the real nitty gritty of things and trying to optimize every small little thing because when you're doing big volume and you're pushing a lot of uses into the app, small changes that increase your app's conversion rate by 0.2% or 0.5% actually make a big difference on your bottom line. And real quick, before we go any further, I just wanna say thank you so much to everyone who's been subscribing to the channel lately. We're at 18,580. 83 subscribers. It absolutely blows my mind that so many of you are enjoying the content and supporting me by subscribing. I appreciate you so much. Let's get back into it. And finally, the most fun stage. I know I keep saying that, but they just get more and more fun as we go along. The most fun stage of building and scaling a mobile app is actually the marketing. At least in my eyes, it is right doing marketing, getting short form content built, and then putting that content on paid ads and scaling your app that way. That is how you get consistent growth in this space. So coming in at number one in this phase is a platform called posted posted will allow you as a brand owner, as an app owner to launch creator contests. So what you do is you launch a contest. You can build your brief and you can set up a sum of money for a contest and creators will post in mass competing to get you the most viewed piece of content for your brand. At the end of it, the contests run for two weeks and then whichever creators have the most views split the prize pool. And this tool is so amazing because it doesn't really matter what your budget is. You can do a lower tier contest, but this is by far the best way to get great content because the creators are incentivized to do well for your brand and get views for your brand. No more chasing creators around trying to get content from them and trying to incentivize them with views. This platform does it all for you. This is a contest that we are running right now currently for Puff Count. As you can see, the contest is still running, but we have 11 different posts here. Here, and we'll blur out these people's names and the ad access codes because you can't have those. But as you can see, the number one person has 28,000 organic views. Number two has 19,000. Number three has 5,000, et cetera, et cetera. And again, these creators only get paid if they get views. As you can see, the top number one guy here with the most views is getting $1,000 out of the $2,000 prize pool. Second place is getting 600. Third place is getting 200. Fourth place is getting 200. This is amazing because it is the quickest way to figure out what content works for your brand. If the content goes viral organically, you can bet it's going to do well on paid ads. And after this contest ends, I can take all this content that has won and run it on paid ads. Okay, next. Once you have that content, you need to actually run it on paid ads. So my last two tools are TikTok ads and Facebook ads. So you can take your best performing short form content and literally just put it on the paid ads and click the spend my money button. And the reason you can do that so effectively and so confidently after you run a posted contest is because if the piece of content goes viral organically, you can bet it's going to perform well on paid ads. Again, if the post goes viral organically, it will be a great paid ad and it will convert for your app. Now, everything I just showed you, is useless unless you actually know how to build mobile apps. So I dropped everything that I know. I dropped my entire process of building mobile apps from scratch in this video. So be sure to give it a watch. And if you enjoyed this, it would mean a lot if you threw a like and you sub to the channel. I appreciate you all and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.